My name is Bafuo Otua Champong, um, National Director of Full Gospel, um, in charge of care and compassion. This morning, I'm going to speak on the topic, the happiest people on earth. And part one is understanding the spiritual gifts. God still rules in the affairs of his people and he knows our weaknesses and has given us spiritual abilities through his Holy Spirit to enable us to live victorious and fruitful lives. Demos, whom God used to found the Full Gospel Businessmen's Fellowship International, at the time when he had his Holy Spirit baptism, the Lord spoke to him saying that Demos, Power is the best right of every Christian. Accept power, Demos. Demos belong to a family where prophecies had characterized all their life, from their migration from Armenia to where they settled in America, California. The Spirit of the Lord told him that prophecy will be part of a, it will be a large part in your family. The Lord seemed to say, but you will not be the prophet. Again, the Holy Spirit at the time told him that, of course, he wanted to do something different, which he thought he had been gifted in, but the Holy Spirit spoke to him and he said, and I quote, of course, I want my church to do this work. You will see many wonderful healings, some from your own hands, but Demos, this is not my special work for you either. Demos had prayed over a sister who had been injured and he she got healed and he had thought that this was the way that the Lord was imparting a gift to him. And even though he had this gift, it was not going to be his major area. Demos kept getting a feeling that God wanted him to go in a different direction. And one quote from the book, The Happiest People on Earth, God spoke to him and he said, it is a group of men, not exceptional men, just average pe business people who know the Lord and love Him but haven't known how to show it. This is a quote from Demos. We are talking on the happiest people on earth and you'll be wondering who are these people? In this lesson, our objectives are that at the end of the um, this discussion, we'll be able to describe the happiest people on earth as identified by Demos Sekerian. Again, we'll define the spiritual gifts and show at least three different differences between spiritual gifts and talents. And then enumerate at least three reasons why every Christian must identify their spiritual mm -hmm. gifts. So who are the happiest people on earth? Are they just Christians? Are they full gospel members or any other particular group? And what is their secret? And what is their secret? Nobody defines it better than our own uh, founder, Demo Shakirian. And he said, Friends, I believe God has a particular gift for each of his servants. Some special abilities we are to use for his kingdom. I believe if we find that gift and use it, we'll be the happiest people on earth. And if we miss it, no matter how many excellent things we do, we will be utterly miserable. This is what Demos Sekirian said. The happiest people are those that have discovered their spiritual gifts and are using them in the service of the Lord. In his mind and wisdom, it takes more than just being a full gospel member to be counted amongst the happiest people on earth. What he meant was that we should be people in God's vineyard who are working with the gifts that have been given them. So steps to enable each one of us appreciate how to discover, develop and use our spiritual gifts. 
we will start by wanting to know what spiritual gifts are. Spiritual gifts are special abilities the Holy Spirit gives Christians according to God's grace to accomplish his work. Every Christian, according to 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, has a spiritual gift. And at times it comes as a, a gift mix. That is, a believer may have a combination of gifts, one main gift area and others that are secondary. All of them for the use and benefit of the body of Christ. So we'll be looking at steps to discovering and de developing your spiritual gifts. And we'll look at some similarities between spiritual gifts and talents. The similarities, both spiritual gifts and talents are given by God. In Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says that God created the heavens and earth and everything that is in it. And in Colossians 1 16, 15, 16, talking about Christ Jesus, he being the exact image of the invisible God, by him and through him, all things were created, things visible and invisible, things in heaven and on earth, all of them, he created them and for his use. So the body of Christ, having received these spiritual gifts, need to use them for the body of Christ and for humanity. These spiritual gifts and talents can be used for selfish or godly purposes depending on how you utilize them. There are people who have talents and have suppressed them or use them and use them for selfish um, gains. So it goes with spiritual gifts. It can produce devastating results or good results, depending on the motive that is behind the use of those uh, talents or gifts. There are differences between talents and spiritual gifts. Some of the differences are that talents are natural abilities from birth. They are given from birth. They are genetic or innate or they are imparted. Some are learned or some are latent. People in Ghana, some people in Ghana today, in what we are today, did not know that they had some special abilities. They have been creative, some creating uh, hand washing machines, some solar panels, and so on and so forth. Some have it on their taxes. All these things were hidden, latent, but situations or a situation came about and they have exhibited uh, and explored these potentials to the maximum for the benefits of humanity. Spiritual gifts, on the other hand, are received and only Christians can have spiritual gifts. According to Romans 8 verse 9, he who does not have the gift of Christ, the spirit of Christ, does not belong to the body. Romans 8, 9. Again, spiritual gifts may come from birth. Jeremiah 1, 5. When God said that, you know, when you were a clot of blood in your mother's womb, I knew you uh, set you apart for this job of a prophecy. But it took time for it to come alive. So even though it may be from birth, it takes time when the spiritual birth occurs in the believer. Believers again rely on the Holy Spirit to discover and develop and use their spiritual gifts. As we saw in the case of Demos, he thought that healing was his uh, main area, but God had set him apart to put together ordinary men, laymen, organize them and lead them into the end time ministry of winning souls. There are key passages on these spiritual gifts, and it's good that we know a few of them. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 to 7. It has seven of them. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. It has nine gifts. 
Ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 13 has five gifts. The way to go to, to know or to discover or identify and develop your spiritual gifts one way is to consult with other mature Christians who may be able to shed more light on what a particular gift is. And we have to be careful to know that Satan also counterfeits spiritual gifts in the realm of his own and influences people to follow him. In Acts chapter 8, verse 18 to 21, the story of uh, Simon the sorcerer, when he wanted, he offered money to buy the Holy Spirit gifts from the disciples, from the apostles. In Acts chapter 19, 11 to 20, again, the sons of Sceva, they had been practicing, they had been practicing um, in magical works, and they thought that they could counterfeit what the apostles had been doing. Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8 has this uh, uh, lips, gifts listed. Prophesying, serving, teaching, exhortation, that is encouraging others, motivating them. The gift of giving, when you give generously to support the work of God and to help others in need. There is another other gift of leading, leading other people with organizational skills, skills or talents or gifts of um, administration, and then of showing mercy. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10, we have the gift of wisdom, we have knowledge, we have faith, we have healings and the working of miracles, the gift of prophecy and the discerning between spirits and then speaking in diverse tongues. Again, the temper interpretation of tongues. These are in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 10. These are some of the spiritual gifts that, you know, uh, God has given to the body of Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11 to 13, we have the ministry gifts, the, apost the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, and the teachers. There are reasons why you have to take the spiritual gifts um, seriously. It helps us to know the will of God for our lives and purpose in the body of Christ. So you have to know. It allows you to make the most or the best use of the potential God has deposited in you. It is said that a lot of us, we sleep over our gifts and do not exercise them. So we may go to the grave, having done so little with what God gave us for the purpose of uh, helping his church. So capacity, God has given us the capacity, he has given us the ability and we need to ignite them and utilize them for the body of Christ. Your gift mix may come in different forms, whether it be the gift of healing or the gift of prophesying there might be other secondary ones. All of them, you are to use them. Your knowledge of the spiritual gifts will help you to appreciate and, and, and develop a healthy self-esteem. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 12 and 13, if you know your area of gifting, you will not covet or think yourself um, more highly favored than the other person. You will stick to your area of gifting, spiritual gifting, and work on it. You, it will not make you bloated. It will not make you think so highly of yourself than others who have other gifts. All of it comes from the same source. It's the Holy Spirit who imparts. He gives the Holy Spirit to those that he must give. You must have we must reflect over these things. 
spiritual gifts often referred to as charismatic gifts or charismata that is grace that is given freely they are gifts and graces they are not things that we work for the Holy Spirit gives us according to his will in 1 Corinthians chapter 12 verse 11 and Hebrews 2 verse 4 all these things are given for the good the common good of the body of Christ and to the glory of God according to Ephesians 4 11 the giving of the spiritual gifts are not to be seen or used as the status symbols, not for self-exaltation, but service in the body of Christ. So we must be careful not to be bloated and seen to be um, above all. We must be humble in the exercise and use of our spiritual gifts given by the Holy Spirit. All the spiritual gifts are important, but we are encouraged to desire the more excellent gift of prophecy, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 31. But beyond this, the best of them all is love. Love, hope. And the rest, but all of them will pass away. Prophecy and all of those things will pass away. Only the love of God will prevail. There are some action points that we have to note. Spend time to go through the list of spiritual gifts listed in the chapters that I mentioned. Namely, Romans chapter 12, verse 6 to 8, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 8 to 12, and Ephesians 4. 11 to 13 there are many others go through them and explore and see your particular area what god is leading you to do so you do not covet others uh, gifts or to suppress yours because you want to be what other people are search and identify other gifts mentioned in the new testament such as celibacy voluntary poverty, martyrdom, hospitality, and missionary work. Observe other good gifts from the church. Your church, there are people who have set themselves up as intercessors. They spend time to intercede for the body of Christ, for the church and particular fellowships. There are some that God has gifted in the deliverance ministry. There are others who lead in worship and so on and so forth. These you, you find by observation in the church. You will find that particular people you know, excel in doing certain things in the body of Christ, be it the church or the fellowship. It may be in the outer world as well. So by observation, you can search and identify also the gifts. There are many others apart from what has been uh, mentioned. You want to pray and you pray for members to desire the Holy Spirit giftings. We want to pray for a deeper understanding of the spiritual gifts and we want to pray for courage to exercise our gifts. There are some of us, even though we have the sense and can feel that God wants us to do certain things, particular things. He has given us the abilities. We either are afraid to use them or we are ashamed to use our gifts. Perchance, if we say something or do something, it may be interpreted otherwise. But it's a gift coming from God and we must exercise them. The more you exercise your spiritual gifts, the more the Lord will give you more like the parable of the ten, uh, talents. He gave some five talents, some two talents, another he gave a talent. The one to whom he gave the five talents, he doubled it. 
the one to whom two talents was given, he doubled it. But the one who had just a talent, it was very, very insulting. He said, Master, I know that you reap where you do not sow, and so on and so forth. So I hid it. I buried it in the ground. Are you burying your spiritual gifts that God has given you? It should not happen. Because on the day of reckoning, you have to give account for what was given to you. Did you use it for the body of Christ? We want to say a short prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you that knowing our weaknesses, knowing our frailties, you have given us of your spirit that we may live victorious life. We pray, Father, that you open the eyes of our understanding and give us direction by the prompting of your Holy Spirit that we will know and identify our spiritual giftings, develop them and use them for the benefit of the body of Christ and to the glory of your holy name. We give you praise. We give you glory. We worship you. Let your Holy Spirit come in his power and might upon your people. And let them work that your name alone will be exalted. We thank you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Discovering your spiritual gifts is a process and it takes time. It can be long term. It requires patience and you know, using what you already have and setting preconditions apply for one to receive this Holy Spirit and to use them. We have to observe the life of characters in the Bible who had various gifts. The prerequisites are that, first of all, you must be a Christian, one who has been born again of the Spirit. In John chapter 3, if you read the verse 3 and then from 5 to 7, Nicodemus had come to Jesus and wanted to know how he was able to work the works that he was doing, how he was able to teach so excellently. And Jesus Christ told him that he needed to be born again. Flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. You cannot inherit the kingdom of God unless you are born again of the spirit of the living God. So the, one con the first condition is that you must be born again as a Christian in order to receive this gift of the Holy Spirit. Two, you must believe that spiritual gifts, they exist. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7, and 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 10, the Lord has made His Spirit available to us, to enable us to do things that ordinarily we cannot. It is to help us. Again, we must be willing to do the work of God. It is a prerequisite. The use of the Holy Spirit is not a private agenda. It is not for private enterprise. When God gives you of a spirit, any particular one of the several gifts, you have to use it in the body of Christ and for his benefit and to the glory of God. Some of us have not asked to know what our giftings are. And according to James chapter 4, verse 2, it says that you quarrel amongst yourselves, you covet and so on. You have not asked. You have not asked. And then again, when you ask, you ask with you know, um, evil motives. We have to ask with the right motive. Continuing from James chapter 4, verse 2, the third verse says that we, we ask with wrong motives. We, we, we ask that we may show ourselves too good in the eyes of people. We saw in the last presentation in Acts chapter 8, verse 18 and 19, uh, that Simon the sorcerer, who had mesmerized the people of his town so much 
um, he had come to the apostles wanting to have uh, the power that they were using and exercising in their healings and you know, miracles that they were working. He offered money and Peter told him that you perish with your money. The sons of Sceva, we, we, we heard about them in the last presentation, wrong motives in the use of the Holy Spirit gives is not countenance in the house of God. Now we want to look at steps to discovering your Holy Spirit gifts. Steps. You have to be aware. So awareness is the first one. We have to accept responsibility. The second one, again, we have to identify our passion, the third, and then check the results. When the Holy Spirit empowers us, He endows us to do whatever we have to do, it must come with visible results. And then we, we, one other area of discovering our Holy Spirit gifts is by others confirming uh, the things that we do. Now we take awareness. If you don't know, then you cannot know where you, you, you fit in. So you have to explore the range of spiritual gifts available. In scripture Romans chapter 12 Ephesians chapter 4 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12 we listed them in the first presentation we have to familiarize ourselves with the spiritual gifts given to the church so in the church where you belong do we hear the voice of God speak to us do we see healings and working of miracles are there men and women of faith, extraordinary faith amongst us? Do we see these ones? We have to be familiar with them. We have to recognize your gifts amongst this range of spiritual gifts. There are so many of them. So read the Bible, discuss it with others, and you will know the whole range of spiritual gifts that has been given to the body of Christ. Again, we have to read books. We have to read from various Bible versions and that will help us broaden our knowledge. We have to consult other Christians who can enlighten us more on their gifts and their operation. This is how we grow in an awareness, in our awareness of the um, gifts of the Holy Spirit. The second one is it says that accept responsibility. Accept responsibility. Some of us shy away from responsibility when we are called upon to do any work in the house of God. Philip was one of the seven deacons in the early church who found his gifts this way, that is exercising it. In Acts chapter 6 verse 1 to 6, he was one of, 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 of the seven that was appointed. So he had the gifts of administration, the gifts of leading and service. In Acts chapter 8, verse 6 and 7, and again in 21, verse 8, this same Philip, Philip, we saw him preaching, we saw him uh, working miracles of healings, and eventually Philip turned out to be an evangelist, reaching out uh, to many. He started as one of the seven and ended up as Philip the evangelist. That's what he was referred to. So don't be afraid to take on new assignments in untried areas, whether in the church or in the fellowship, in your communities. When you visit the sick and you feel led to pray, pray. And the Lord, by his own spirit, will do the healing. There are some of us when we are even called to pray in public, it becomes a battle. Some people have practiced it over and over and now have acquired the skill, empowered by the Holy Spirit, to pray for people to feel comfortable. So we must move out of our comfort zone. Identify your passion. Identify your passion with regard to the work of the Holy Spirit. Now, feelings have a place. 
our inner spirit, our inner spirit, you know, witnesses to us and the spirit of Christ that you know, there are certain things that God will want us to do. The urge to do certain things, the prompting by the Holy Spirit is a pointer to what God wants us to do. So identify your passion. What do you enjoy doing most in the service of God, in the body of Christ? What do you enjoy doing most? And what, which gifts do you find you get attracted to? If you get attracted to a particular um, area of service, God may be leading you to look at that area um, very well. Do you feel good when you use your spiritual gifts? That is the secret of the happiest people on earth. So you have to follow that leading. Things that you have to watch out for regarding your passion. What is the level of uh, enthusiasm that you, you put in in doing the work? When you receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, it is not for you to select amongst them. You may have a major area, but the minor areas also, if you have been given the gifting, you must use them in obedience to God. There are people who are comfortable in one area, and when you tell them to do uh, other things, they draw back. But God has given his gifts of the Holy Spirit to the church, and other than we will use them for the benefit of his people. So don't be selective. Are there things in your church, on your fellowship, that you see are lacking? If you are getting a prompting, an inkling that you should act on them, then it is the Lord who is leading you in that area. So what ignored challenges do you want to strongly address? If it's in the area of administration, if it is the area of you know, organizing people, in the area of praying, um, that is the way to go. All these are answers or pointers or guides to what your gift is. Pray that the Holy Spirit who gives these gifts, he is the giver of all these gifts. Pray and he will lead you where you should you know, major and where your minor is. We have to check the results. Gifted people see positive results when they apply their gifts. In other words, when you exercise the gift that has been given you, there has to be visible results. You have to look back and see, you do a review and you see what your past actions brought, whether in the exercise of word of knowledge or wisdom or giving counsel or working miracles and so on. When you operated in the area of a particular gift, did what you expected happen? If you were doing teachings, did the people understand very well? If it was healings, were people healed? Are there testimonies to that effect? When you shared the word of God as an evangelist, were people saved? How were they drawn? All these things are manifest in our results that show that in fact it is your particular area of gifting. Confirmation by others. There are certain things that we do um, working in the house of God, working in our fellowships. We are not exactly sure if it's our area, but other people who observe us are able to tell us that, oh, you do well in this area. Oh, they encourage us. Oh, the other time when you ministered, oh yes, it really sunk with me. Other people will observe. You might not have noticed it. And so the feedback from them gives you a confirmation that you are in your right area of ministry. So others tend to recognize your gift before you are even aware. And when they tell you, then you have to um, uh, work on it and you know, develop it. Have you received any feedbacks? The feedbacks encourage you in your area of gifting. So developing your gifts 
you have to read or listen to audio tapes watch videos around the gifts that you have there are men and women of God who are standing in various areas those that teach those that minister those that work miracles and so on you watch them people have reading written books you read them and then it encourages you you have to attend training sessions schools where the word of god is taught conferences just to broaden your horizon and to develop your skills and second samuel chapter 19 verse 18 to 24 and second kings chapter 4 verse 38 to 44 we read about the um, school of the prophets it may not be the exact replica that we have in our time, but as you read literature, you attend men and women of God who are gifted in these areas. They are able to lead you on also. People who are gifted in particular areas pray to impart. So receive impartation from people with apostolic anointing. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 14. Paul was telling Timothy that the laying on of hands that imparted unto him the ability to minister, to ability to uh, pastor and to lead, um, he should find it into flame. Observe and share thoughts with others, having the same gifts. He says that iron sharpeneth iron. So as you interact with people with similar gifts who have you no know, gone ahead of you, more mature than you, more experienced than you, you learn from them. So exercise your gift in faith. There is food for thought for us to consider. Make use of all the facilities that you can find in books, online um, teachings to discover your gift. Assess it against the word of God and what your spirit, the spirit of God in you prompts you to do. So you have to work out. We have to work it out to find into flame. Keep the fire burning in the areas that God has touched you with his Holy Spirit. Don't be afraid that you make mistakes in the use of your gifts. Joseph and the Bible was a dreamer. It was a gift that God had given him, able to interpret dreams. He made a mistake amongst his brothers. When he had a dream, he did not exercise maturity or wisdom. He told them, and he said, ah, we are going to serve you. Is that what you mean? So they took offense and they dealt with him. So do not be afraid. It ended up well with him all the same. Moses. The man of God who led Israel out of uh, captivity. Moses had a weakness. It was anger. Even though in other areas he excelled as a judge and as a leader. David did wrong. He killed Uriah and all of that and took his wife. But David had exceptional giftings of the Lord and he exercised them. Peter also denied Jesus Christ, but he was restored. Whatever your gifts are, do not be afraid to exercise them. So we come to the action points. How you have to explore further and read on spiritual gifts, helpful books that uh, will, uh, will help you to grow. A few books are listed in our manual our fundamentals um, some include discover your spiritual gifts by peter wagner the body body life series by c steadman and a whole host of them you can check from online and buy some of these books or read as much material as you can being careful that not all that you see online or on the um, on the internet uh, is correct material you have to be discerning 
Everything has to be weighed against the Bible. Visit a good bookshop like Challenge and the others and you, know, you will get good books to read. And we come to our prayer points. Having learned all these things, we will ask the Holy Spirit to help you discover your spiritual gifts. You have to pray for grace to always use your spiritual gifts to bless the body of Christ and to honor God. And pray against slothfulness. Pray against slothfulness. Being lazy about what the Lord has given you because the body of Christ needs the gifts that you have. And that is why God gave them to you. We will say a short prayer and ask that the Holy Spirit himself, who is the giver of the spiritual gifts, will help you to discover your spiritual gifts. You will pray for grace that you always use your spiritual gifts to bless the body of Christ and against being slothful. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you that you have brought us this far. We pray, Holy Spirit, you are the giver of all the spiritual gifts and you have given your spiritual gifts to the body of Christ because you know our weakness. You know that we need the power from on high to do and to work your works that we may live victorious and fruitful lives. We pray in the name of Jesus, as many as desire the Holy Spirit giftings, I pray in the name of Jesus, that, oh yes, you will impart it unto them. We pray, Father, that having given us of your spirit, the gifts that we need to work in the body of Christ, we will not be lazy about them. We will not be selective. But Father, we will use them all to your glory and to your honor. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus with thanksgiving. Amen.